the Bhagavad Gita 15th verse, 5th chapter and we'll discuss on this topic, if God is good, why does he allow evil to exist? So the way we are flowing here is that we discussed uh, in the Bhagavad Gita till now various topics. The previous session we discussed about uh, the spiritual master. So the topics which we are taking, they are moving forward as the Gita's flow is moving and that's why there might not be an intrinsic connection between one topic and another. But there is an overall thread of thought and that is we are addressing issues progressively at a deeper level. So there, there are two distinct things why we have discussed karma and there we discussed, we have earlier discussed destiny also where we discussed about why bad things happen to good people and we also discussed why self-destructive behavior is there among us. So in this session we will go into a deeper level of action, understanding things. So can we go to the next slide? Nadatte kasyachit papam na chaiva sukrutam vibho agyane navrutam gyanam te namuhiyanti jantavaha So nadatte kasyachit papam kasyachit of any living being papam wrongdoing na adatte I do not accept that na chaiva sukrutam vibho bho nor do I nor does the vibhu the divine being accept the good that anyone has done. The divine is transcendental. Agyanen avritam jnanam Agyanen By ignorance we are covered Tena muhiyanti jantavaha 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 is a living being. Jantu is a word for insect but Jantu is also a word for living being. So the living beings are covered by ignorance and thus they act self-destructively. Agyane navratam jnanam tena muhyanti jantavaha. So we will discuss today about what is in philosophy called as etiology. Now etiology is also used in science, especially in diseases to understand the cause of disease. There is epidemi epidemiology and there is etiology. So epidemiology is basically about how a disease spreads and because of the corona crisis the word epidemiology might you might have seen in the news epidemiologists are quite uh, the experts being consulted to understand what measures need to be taken at a social level to curb the crisis. So epidemiology refers to how a disease spreads as an epidemic. Etiology refers to the causation. What causes disease? But that is a medical usage of the word. Philosophically, etiology refers to the study of causation. Causation is, uh, why does something exist at all? Where does it come from? So that we will discuss today in terms of uh, three broad parts. Can you go to the next slide? So, <clears throat> why, uh, does evil really exist? Uh, why does God allow evil to exist? And how does God help us to overcome evil? So now when we ask, does evil really exist? We need to understand what is it that we are discussing actually. Because unless we clarify terms, we can't actually move forward in gaining any, any understanding at all. So to clarify terms means that what are we referring to by evil? So let's move forward. Now there is a difference between evil and tragedy. So tragedy, suppose somebody is say driving a car and their brake fails and their car veers out of, of the control and there is a, some, uh, <coughs> some passerby walking on the pavement and they get run over. Now that is a tragedy. It's unintentionally caused pain. Evil is deliberately inflicted pain where someone is driving uh, deliberately to run over someone. Maybe they have been uh, assigned as a, hired as a hitman and they are mercenaries, they are out to kill. So somebody who is deliberately inflicting pain, that is what we might consider as evil. 
So in the world, there is tragedy. So for example, now um, the, at a broad level, we could call the corona crisis as a tragedy. But suppose there were a uh, weapon, of, weapon of mass destruction, which is a biological weapon in, in the form of germs that has been that had been sent to immobilize paralyze and uh, kill people then that would be brutal that would be evil so when the pain is deliberately inflicted by some conscious agent that is what is called as evil so the question is does evil really exist so now again, let's clarify this further. Can you go to the next slide? What evil essentially means is that evil is deliberately inflicted. Evil is when somebody causes pain simply for the purpose of causing pain without serving any higher purpose. So then that is actually evil. So for example, uh, when there was the, the concentration camps during the Nazi regime, in some of the concentration camps in Auschwitz and other places, the Nazi soldiers had put a big print slogan, work rewards. And they would make the prisoners carry large bags of wet sand from one end of a long long one end of the long prison pathway to the other and then carried back so they were basically making a mockery that there was no reward in that work being done you said to carry wet sand from here to there and again from there there to here and from here to there so they were just sadistically getting some pleasure in causing pain to others so that is evil. If we consider the Mahabharat, Duryodhana didn't have any shortage himself, but he simply wanted to humiliate the Pandavas and thereby gain some pleasure. That humiliation could be by taking away their wealth, by taking away their honor, by doing whatever it could to cause them pain. So evil means causing pain and finding some pleasure some horrible demoniac kind of pleasure in causing that pain so can we go ahead so now we might say does evil really exist well there are the <coughs> there are the concentration camps uh, in germany in nazi germany there was the gulags in russia in soviet russia now we Mostly, when we want to talk about horrors, recent horrors, of course, now we have a current uh, terror going on, the corona scare. But if we want to talk about horrors, probably what is etched most in people's imagination, at least in the Western world and in the Westernized world, is the, is the uh, concentration camps of Nazi Germany. Actually, the deaths that happened in Soviet Russia, they are much at least it's a hundred million, which is far more than the toll of the World War One, World War Two combined together, including whatever incidental casualties were associated with it. And so, basically, everybody who was wealthy within communist government was considered to be guilty. The only reason you are wealthy is because you have exploited the poor. Other factors were not considered. Maybe people, wealthy people are hard working. Maybe people, they are talented. Maybe they are, <clears throat> they have used their ability and that's why they become wealthy. No. So just being wealthy was seen to be being guilty. And everybody who was wealthy was stripped of their wealth. And many of them were immediately killed. And many were sent to these gulags where they were just tormented. So, the idea was that there are people who have done incredible amount of evil. And now in today's world, we might consider terrorists who, who use children to kill children. 
you know, who used to indoctrinate people who are not even who are barely teenagers and maybe use them as suicide bombers and send them into crowded areas in the cities and have them blow themselves up and blow people around them. So people do evil things. So now the question comes up, if you want to ask, does evil really exist? Well, certainly we can see that evil actions are done. So, and there are people who delight in causing pain. Now, now the question comes up, that evil does really exist. Now, uh, does it not? And then the new, after the, after the, Second World War, there were what were called the Nuremberg Trials, and uh, during those trials, many of the Nazis who were prisoners of war, they tried to plead not guilty of the horrible crimes that had been done in the, in the, con in the concentration camps by saying that we were simply following orders. Now, within the military, within the government, obedience is considered an important eth ethic, but what the Nuremberg trial decided was that you know, there are certain actions which are so barbaric that if anybody for, does them, they are culpable. No matter who tells you to do something like that, if you do that, you are wrong. So blowing up the heads of small children, no matter who gives you the order to do that, that is that is wrong. So although we live in an age of moral relativism where people often say that you know, if you think it is wrong, it is wrong for you. If, it, if I don't think it is wrong for me, it's not wrong for me. But it's not that simple. There are certain things which are, which, which are universally we would consider them to be wrong. So evil does exist. And in fact, even the, even people who are very liberal, who, who who claim to be very very progressive, very liberal, very open-minded, they are often quite illiberal about those who are not so liberal. Liberals are very quick to label conservatives as evil. So the idea is, apart from the labeling, that there are there evil really does exist. Now the question comes up, okay, if evil exists, where does it come from? So go ahead, please. Where does evil come from? If we consider that question, the answer to that is broadly to, to understand that uh, as conscious beings, our existence has three levels. There's the body, the mind and the soul. So the soul is always pure. The soul is a part of God. And in that sense, the soul is not affected by anything worldly. And the soul is pure. Now, there is the mind and the body, which are the instruments through which the soul acts. Now, whenever we give any example to illustrate any spiritual truth, the example is often inadequate to illustrate that truth. Every example, every metaphor, every analogy, that is like a, if you consider an object, it's like a rubber band around that object. The rubber band helps us to get some hold on that object. But the object is much bigger than the rubber band. So we might say this for the soul, the body and mind is an instrument. Now, the, the, when we use the word instrument, it simply means that, okay, it's a tool which the soul is using. Well, it's that's true, but it's not that simple. It's not that simple means that, oh, yes, of course, for the soul, the body is a tool. But it is not simply a tool as as say simple or distant as a hammer say if somebody takes a hammer and instead of hammering a nail with it slams it on someone's uh, finger then and they say and they say oh, i didn't do it the hammer did it well the hammer didn't do it you did it 
so a hammer is a very simple instrument and we understand that it's it's unconscious and if the hammer does anything it is the person holding the hammer who is doing it so in that sense there is a clear dis difference between the instrument and the person using the instrument as they say sometimes a bad worker blames his or her tools so <clears throat> now we could we, with respect to simple instruments we can clearly differentiate between the hammer between the tool and the word artisan or the worker using the tools but in the case of the soul when the soul enters into a particular body mind setup as so it gets associated with the body mind setup gets quite tightly associated with it and when we say the soul is conditioned in the condition stage when the soul acts to what extent is it the soul acting or to what extent is the body and the mind acting now say when we start a computer program so nowadays as the government locked as the uh, many go governments are imposing lockdowns there is an understandable fear not only of the virus but also an understa understandable fear of a government totalitarianism that the government might seize too much use this as a pretext for seizing too much power and in china for example in some parts you know every single citizen has to have a identification tag on their hands and through the through their identification tag on their wrist and through that everywhere that they go is being tracked and any point they might get a call on their phone saying that you cannot go here you cannot go there and china wants that other countries should also adopt this that will of course that technology is developed by them and that would mean that they will they will have control over all the information that any other government is also getting so now there is this the point i'm making here is that when we start using any sophisticated technology we do not know what all is happening say if when we surf a website all that we are doing is we is clicking on that link and uh, that site is opening but if you use some privacy protecting browser then a browser may tell that you know, okay 25 other tracking uh, 25 objects that were trying to track you we have checked them now it might have checked 25 but who knows there might be many more just still tracking us so the idea is the more complicated a, a tool becomes the the computer the browser they are all tools for us to say get some information see something read something but the more complicated something is the more difficult it is for us to keep track of all that is happening at that time so when we start a program when we say we, when we start our computer all that we do is we press a power button and we might be wanting to operate certain softwares but so many other softwares start off with that and if there is one virus that has come in then that virus starts off and then that might do so many things so actually the word virus now it is the primary meaning is again becoming the prominent meaning the idea that virus is a, is a kind of a pathogen a germ that had receded from the public mind the word virus often was used with respect to software and further it was used with respect to posting on social media this media has become viral now this post this video has become viral well something becoming viral is was considered a very good thing was considered to be a success but in the, but it comes from a the alarming power of viruses to replicate and spread very widely so a virus might get activated as soon as we start a computer and we may not be aware of it so similarly for us when we when we as souls we are, we are associated with a body mind machine the body mind machine is quite complicated and we don't even know what all is happening and the uh, the mind itself is having many impressions within it some of them are pure some of them are impure and the body itself also 
has certain tendencies with it and thus when a person acts every single act of theirs may not be consciously initiated by them so some people are so habitually evil that they don't even realize that they are doing something evil it's not they're just nonchalant about it so uh, say a butcher might slaughter animals and not even feel their pain because it just become habitual for them so the point i'm making over here is that there's the body there's the mind and there's the soul and then what is done with the body and the mind could be not something which is consciously initiated by the soul it could be that that there are there are there are conditionings there are impressions in the mind and just like viruses start off as soon as we start off a computer similarly those conditioning start acting out so we need to at one level acknowledge that people act in evil ways and at the same time also acknowledge that the soul itself is not evil although for all functional purposes that person may be acting in evil ways can we go ahead so there are that's why this is the three things body mind and soul so now this is a elaborate subject and we will come to this again in the 16th chapter of the bhagavad gita where we talk about divine and demonic natures but to put it simply over here are people good or evil so there are some people who say that uh, there so now again here i am simplifying things within the say for example the christian world view it is said that we all fell because of our original sin and when we fell because of this original sin so we are all contaminated and that sin is is transmitted almost something like a genetic defect from adam down to all of humanity so people are intrinsically evil and unless they are they are uh, saved by the intervening grace of jesus uh, they will act in evil ways sometimes they may act immediately sometimes they may not act immediately so now this idea that people are evil becomes very difficult for most people to digest because it's true that some people act in evil ways but a lot of people do act in good ways and this idea that sin is transmitted as a genetic defect through all in, into all of humanity from birth this can't account why there is such a wide variation in character among people so then the theory that okay all of us have some tendency toward evil but some people get infected by the devil and those who are infected by the devil they become innately evil so now some people are evil is a relatively more acceptable hypothesis for us yeah we do see some people they just do horrible things and they don't feel any remorse or guilt out of it so why would they why do, what makes them do like that so let's consider the one idea that some people are innately evil intrinsically evil the other idea is what is the idea implicit in in leftist ideology so that people are innately good it's only situations that make them bad so communism has the idea that if there is equal power then there will be there is equal wealth equal power equal resources then there will be equal happiness so we just all sort of inequality is the cause of unhappiness it seems right yeah we don't want inequality but the problem is that uh, so the idea is you know inequality is a external condition you don't have equal education you don't have equal wealth you don't have equal jobs equal paying jobs whatever so we remove that inequality so this is the idea that if you do social engineering change social conditions and then people's goodness will start manifesting but it is not that simple there are we are of all definitely affected by our social situations but there are people who even in good situations say good families good upbringing good education still end up doing terrible things and there are people who have everything going wrong for them and still they do good things so what 
what is what causes this difference so what is it that makes some people do good things and some people do bad things so this is uh, people are if we say people are always good then that also is not born true by uh, by evidence we see that there's a difference between different people and the balanced understanding is what we could say the Gita's three level self understanding that the soul is always good the mind may be good or evil so not everybody is simply innately bad because some people's minds might have pure impressions good impressions and they don't do bad things and in contrast some people might be terrible uh, because their minds are terrible and their terrible actions can't be explained simply in terms of their circumstances so now there are people who say for cons if you consider terrorism now <clears throat> the one extreme within say terrorism would be to say that actually some people might li link that say Islamic extremism with Islam itself and say that Islam itself is terrible now that is an extreme position and it is a condemnable position because one out of every four people in the world is is a Muslim today so if somebody equa equated it entirely then saying then they are misunderstanding things but if somebody says actually it's only political, economic, uh, social conditions. This, these people are oppressed and they're exploited and they have no opportunities and that's why they become terrorists. Well, yes, that's an explanation. But is it the complete explanation? We see that that might explain why many people join the ranks of terrorists. But what about the leaders of the terrorists? If we consider Gaddafi or Bin Laden or any of the major leaders, most of them were born in wealthy families. They were quite well to do. They, many of them were well educated. <clears throat> Recently, when in Sri Lanka, major incidents of terrorist, terrorism occurred against Buddhists, we saw that many of those terrorists were, were having uh, foreign degrees. Many of them were masters or doc masters from UK and other places. So, is it that only situations make people bad? If that were the case, then we can't explain why people who are born in very good situations, who have a good situation in their life, still they do terrible things. So, both extremes are to be avoided. People are not innately evil and nor is it that people are innately good. When you talk about people, it means they are multifaceted, multi they are multi each individual is multi-layered at the level at the layer at the innermost level that is at the level of the soul everybody is good but the sometimes it is what is deep inside is not the problem it is the it is what is outside that is creepy that is that is ghastly sometimes so let's move ahead <coughs> So here when we are talking about evil, we are not talking about evil as some being which exists outside of us and impels us to do evil things. So, so why do people do bad things? There are two questions, you know, why do bad things happen to good people? That's one question and that we can understand as a karmic reaction to some extent. But then another question is why do sometimes good people do bad things? If all of us are parts of God, when we say, why does God allow evil to exist? One question could be, you know, why, if we are all parts of God, why would people, those who are parts of God, do terrible things like this? So the point is, one way to answer this is to say, ascribe evil to some external being. So it can be Satan or Shaitan or whatever. And that being causes people to act in evil ways. Now, this is a relatively oversimplified to the point of distorted understanding of human psychology. That 
in the past this was quite common that whenever a person would especially people would have mental health problems the simple explanation would be you are possessed by something and then they try to correct that behavior by trying to remove that possession from them but the thing is it's not that simple uh, are there external beings we'll talk about ghosts later some people can be possessed by ghosts but ghosts are not what is being talked about when when satan is mentioned the idea is satan is a is a, a being who is opposed to god and who is the cause of all evil in the vedic conception there is maya and we'll talk about maya later but maya doesn't mean maya is not intrinsically opposed to god maya is a servant of god testing the sincerity of souls on behalf of god so evil is not some external evil being in the vedic understanding it is evil is simply the impressions within us that have become accumulated and they they have become accumulated because of our repeated wrong doings so when somebody becomes an alcoholic it's not that some evil being is possessed them and that evil being is making them take alcohol rather they have drunk once twice thrice four times five times so many times that now they just can't stop drinking and that's how they have become evil so the internal accumulated impressions caused by repeated wrong doings can you go ahead now so till now what we have discussed is does evil really exist now the question comes up why does god allow evil to exist so the first point is because god has given us free will so free will means free will we can do what we want if somebody tells you have free will so like some people say you, know, you are free to express your mind as long as you agree with me well that is not really freedom if somebody says that you can you can you can speak whatever you want know that if you disagree with me our relationship is going to end well is that are you really wanting freedom or you want to want to give people an illusion of freedom so if if free will is to be real then that means that free will has to be you really have the opportunity to act freely so what does that mean can you go ahead that means that some people might use their free will to act wrongly so when some things happen in the world there are three factors there's god's will there is free will and there is evil and through all these actions happen so god's will is the supreme will by which all actions happen so but god is not the cause of the specific things that we do say god, uh, without rains not, there will not no growth on the earth but rains don't determine we, where weeds grow and where grains grow the second cause is there so there is god's will is the ultimate cause for everything that happens and there is free will which is basically the idea that each one of us has the kind of has freedom and we can choose to act free will has no meaning if there is no facility to exercise free will and then there is evil evil means the accumulated conditionings because of which we sometimes do wrong so and we do wrong without even consciously thinking about what we are doing and without even feeling bad about what we are doing so now <clears throat> now if we consider this particular figure that brings in two three three entities within existence so three entities within existence that is there is from a philosophical perspective we could call it as ishwara jeev and prakriti Ishvara is the supreme lord or if you want to use alliterative usage there's jagdish jiva and jagat so jagdish is the supreme lord ishvara then jiva is the conscious being and jagat is material nature so here when we talk about jagat jagdish jiva and jagat so god's will is jagdish the free will is jiva and the conditioning that results thereby is jagdish so how do things happen that 
it is the it is the soul desires it is god sanctions and then the material nature executes i'll discuss this a little bit more now and in the future session also when we talk about divine and demoniac natures we'll talk about this more but in every action that is there these three factors are involved now the con so the conditioning is not necessarily always evil the conditioning generally when we use the word conditioning we use it for a negative sense but conditioning can also be positive it depends on individual to individual so but here we are specifically talking about why people do evil actions so it is god's will free will and evil all three work together to uh, ad, uh, whenever actions happen so god sanctions god doesn't intend god doesn't necessarily desire that evil things happen or people do evil things god sanctions them can you go ahead so now when we consider that if god did not give us the possibility to misuse our free will then there would be no meaning to free will so free will is uh, free will is associated with the intrinsically with the possibility for misuse yeah please go ahead now this brings us to the last part here how does god help us to overcome evil so this is itself a elaborate subject but right now we'll just talk about two things education purification and benediction so education means that he helps us recognize why our how our actions have consequences why we do what we do and when we do something what are the results of that so can you move ahead education means the knowledge of the correlation between choices and consequences so how do choices come up how do choices come up they come up by uh, our own use of free will sometimes conscious sometimes unconscious and even if we are not aware of the consequences the consequences are going to come sometimes for example if somebody has a large a large uh, they got a huge inheritance then when they have that huge inheritance they may feel that i have so much money i can spend whatever i want and they might spend but how long how long can they spend like that not very long isn't it sooner or later it will be a problem for them sooner or later they will run out of money so like that we might have good karma right now and because of that good karma there might not we might feel that i am doing some things but i am not getting any results of those things but the results are going to come that education that action choices have consequences that comes from say study of the bhagavad gita then purification is what we do by the practice of bhakti yoga there are pan purifying manifestations like the holy name like the like the bhagavad gita itself like the deities so when we expose ourselves to these then we become purified that means the evil tendency within us goes down now purification and benediction are related by benediction and specifically talking in terms of grace or mercy we purification is what we do by our conscious endeavor we try to expose our consciousness to krishna but benediction is where the evil tendencies just disappear from within our hearts and so we all experience this purification purification that happens by conscious effort and purification that happens just by by divine grace that means some desires might just dis disappear so somebody might have been smoking for a long time but at a particular time they just you know i don't want to smoke anymore not that they have that uh, craving to smoke and they decide not to smoke but just that desire itself has disappeared and when that happens that is the time when you can say they have become purified so this is how we understand that there is god's grace is available to help us overcome evil so i'll summarize and then we can have a few questions i spoke today on the topic of if god is good why does he allow evil to exist and within that we discussed three broad points does evil really exist that was the major part of the class in that i mentioned yes evil in the sense of people doing evil deeds definitely it happens and it happens with disturbing 
frequency i talked about auschwitz and the gulags and now where why do people do such evil things so we discussed are some, are people innately bad are some people innately bad or are people good if the situations make them do bad so we discussed about the three level conception of the body mind and soul and the soul is pure but the mind has its conditionings and depending on the conditionings in the mind people might act in different ways in different situations so therefore what is important for us is to recognize that each one of us has to act in consciously chosen ways so then i talked about evil is like a conditioning within the body and the mind which might get activated without our awareness just like certain computer programs may start off ah uh, and when they start off even without our awareness they might track us or they might do certain things like viruses so then what <clears throat> so where does evil why does god allow evil to exist it says the existence of evil is a logical consequence of the existence of free will and when some things happen there are three factors in it there is god's will there is free will and there is evil so all three come together for people to exercise their free will uh, for people act all three factors are involved in it and then i talk lastly about how does god help us to overcome evil that is for education purification and benediction so let's look at some questions now so if a child is born blind who has done evil is it the child or the parents well first of all if a child has done a child is born blind it is not for us to judge at that particular point it is for us to help you know we should not focus on what is whose karma we should focus on what is our dharma and we should strive to be kind and compassionate so both the child and the parents whatever support we can give we should give having said that karma is complicated so a and we are all interconnected in a network of karma so generally if if we are all part of a family and then if one person suffers the whole family suffers because of that so is it just that person's karma is it that everybody's karma generally when suffering is coming we understand that it is because of something we have done in the past so the child and the parents we could say that both of them have certain karma because of which they are getting it but generally whenever something like this happens we don't uh, we don't judge people anyone involved for their karma we focus on our dharma and see what we can do the best in that situation okay so when i talk about evil as hmm, <clears throat> people might have their own purposes that the german justification was that why they why did they pane why did they were so much against the jews because in the first world war they didn't support it and then they worked against german interests so terrorists feel that they have the justification for retaliating against uh, america so see the human mind or specifically the human intelligence has the capacity to justify anything and everything and generally even if we meet the if suppose the worst of criminals are interrogated uh, hardly anyone actually will admit that i did something wrong they will come up with justifications for what they did that's the idea of rationalizing rash when we rationalize we tell rational lies r a t i o n a l l i e s so we tell rational lies so yes everybody will have their own justification for what they did now how right it is how how valid the justification is that is something which has to be considered and so generally the the biggest problem with anger or hate now, anger is a is like a rush of blood 
but ang when anger becomes solidified and fossilized it becomes hate and when anger and hate are present the biggest problem with that is that they make us lose any sense of proportion or perspective so generally if justice is to be done the justice has to be proportionate uh, but when there is anger and there is vengefulness because of anger and hatred and all sense of proportionality is lost so anybody can justify whatever they are doing but that doesn't make that thing right so generally no evil doer will say that what they are doing is evil duryodhan when he was being chastised by the sages chastised by the elders warned by caution by krishna duryodhan said why are all of you blaming me even if i do deepest of deep introspection i see that what i have done is simply uh, i don't see anything wrong in what i have done and if at all anything is wrong he said i have simply acted according to my nature so you should hold the the creator who gave me my nature he is responsible not me so now nobody forced duryodhan to disrobe draupadi to attempt to disrobe draupadi so actually speaking it's just not true to say that just because somebody has a justified reason for doing something that doesn't make the action right so so when i said that there is a evil now now when people so for when i said for the sake of causing pain if it is done in a proper system of justice generally the same person is the victim and the same person is the judge then that's not considered to be a very valid system of justice there has to be a there has to be a plaintiff there has to be a defendant and there has to be a third person who is the judge so we'll go into maya a little later when in the 7th chapter when i discuss about this but let's see if i can, uh, let's go to the other questions first is satan's role same as maya to purifying living entity to choose the right thing well no satan is considered to be an intrinsically evil being who was originally in some in tradition they said that is lucifer or whatever was he was with god and he fell away from god but whatever happens the idea is that he is now evil and there is going to be a final confront within the christian theology there is a book called the book of revelations where it's quite there is a description of a total disaster going to come on at the time of final confrontation between god and satan god will kill satan and then there will be heaven on the earth that is the idea so that's not the um, it's not that satan is making people do the right thing see because of the fear of satan some people might do the right thing that's a different thing but that's not satan's intention satan's intention is to mislead people but some people out of fear of satan might become very cautious and and do the right thing so just like many people might have been unhygienic and now they might be may well they might be following more the rules of hygiene much better now than earlier but the corona virus is not intended it is not it is not consciously circulating to make people become more hygienic so caution might be a result of something but that doesn't mean caution was the intention of that thing so so now when we act in some particular way we are forced to act and then we say it was destined so if it was destined then where the choice come in and where is free will and where is the astrology well generally speaking we talk about destiny in terms of the things that happen to us not the things that we do uh, the, the the idea that the, our choices are destined makes uh, all of uh, scripture meaningless to say if if we say that we have no free will 
then we can convert God into a devil. How? Because if we have no free will, then we are we are forced to do certain actions, but we are going to get the consequences of those actions. That means somebody is uh, somebody uh, say somebody catches us by the neck and makes us rob a bank, and then they put us in the jail for robbing the bank. Well, that's evil. So it's not that. Uh, so and if ultimately God is behind it, then God becomes evil. That's it's not like that. So generally, our choices are not considered to be destined. What happens to us is free will. What, sorry, what happens to us is destiny. How we respond to it is free will. Uh, so we get a part. If you go back to our earlier session on Karman Nevadi Karastit 247 verse, the role of astrology, free will, and destiny will become clear over there. Mm. Now, in the slide on God's will, free will, and evil, yeah, I will I will elaborate on that in the divine and demonic natures more, uh, where I will talk more about etiology, more about why some people become demoniac. That's the 16th chapter. But suffice it to say that for us it can appear okay so astro so am i audible i think i, I was muted for a minute so i'm audible isn't it yeah okay so Essentially, when I said that evil is Jagat, it doesn't mean material nature is evil. What I meant is that for us, it can seem as if the conditioning that is there, suppose somebody is an alcoholic and is trying to give up alcohol, uh, give up, but you know, the conditioning that comes up within them which makes them do it, it almost seems to be something independent of them which is forcing them to act in particular ways. So, in that sense, that is a part of material nature. It is something different from us. It is the condition that is present in our mind, and the mind is like a software program that gets activated on its own. So we are not saying material nature is evil, but the conditioning which is within the mind and the body, that conditioning is separate from the soul. So in that sense, evil is not present directly in the jiva and is not present directly in God. It is present in the jagat. That doesn't make that. Evil being present as the conditioning within the mind is not the same as saying that nature itself is evil. They are two separate things. Well, <clears throat> some people are talking about change in today's, in the current crisis, but uh, hardly anyone is talking about eating animals. First of all, life is complicated and uh, do we really know that the cause of, the cause of this current crisis is, uh, is eating meat? We can make a reasonable case that the world would be a better place if, we, if there were less consumption of animals and in fact, you know, now factory farming is so great that actually the whole animal population in the world, natural population, if we took the natural population that exists in the jungles and we took the population that exists in the factory farms, in the, so actually all the animals in nature, they would become like a small pebble and all the animals that are grown to be slaughtered are like a huge boulder. So, <clears throat> more than the entire population of humanity, 8 billion, more than that is the number of, if you consider not just animals on the earth, but also fish that are killed, either farmed fish or natural fish are killed, then more than the entire population of humanity is the population, is the number of living beings that are killed by human beings. So it's, it's horrible, although meat was always a part of human society, but this level of organized slaughter of animals is unprecedented in human history and it is going to have serious consequences. So, you know, nature is teaching us that it is not that we humans alone who matter in the, on the earth. There are other living beings and they have a right to live. So, 
<clears throat> we can make a reasonable case that if we live more in harmony with nature that say the uh, the most uh, probable hypothesis for why the current corona crisis has come up is that uh, <clears throat> it came in the wuhan wet markets so through the consumption possibly of bats or whatever but the point is that we can't uh, uh, unless we can have either clear evidence or irrefutable reasoning to uh, to to attribute a particular disaster to a particular cause now to say that something is the root cause how, what is the evidence for that and how are we going to persuade anyone when certain calamities come how, throughout history there have been disasters coming and uh, it's a you know it's a one temp whenever we start following any particular path one temptation that comes up is to come up with simple explanations for complex problems so that is a temptation that we need to resist now now certainly we can make a reasonable case that if animal consumption animal food can be reduced and we'll be more in harmony with the way humanity is meant to live but to simplistically say that this is the root cause well even if we say shastra does shastra clearly say that the current corona crisis has been caused by this 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 no we have to we we cannot we are, whenever there is some mass disaster we have to have certain amount of humility to acknowledge epistemological uncertainty then even when the bull and the cow are being beaten by kali and parikshit maharaj ask them you know what is the cause of their suffering the bull and cow they say suffering is different philosophers have different theories of what causes suffering and we don't know well right now kali is in front of them and beating them but they don't say so scripture is demonstrating humility in the case of uh, in the face of suffering that might seem uh, having an to uh, have an obvious cause so for most thoughtful people the if if people feel that we are using a, a catastrophe to simply propagate our ideology there are few things as disorienting and even disgusting for people as that so we need to exhibit sensitivity compassion and then make a rational reasonable case for a more harmonious living which could involve Uh, less or no consumption of animal food so so i'll take one a few more questions and then we can stop mm. if someone is born in a family where certain kinds of activities are habitual Uh, then does that mean that uh, it is because of their past wrong doing that this is happening and that they are forced to act in evil ways yes all of us our actions are shaped by multi multiple factors so if somebody is born in a particular situation which is godless then that indicates that in the past they had made choices to have god less in their lives and that's why they were now born in a godless situation so if we when we have the opportunity to turn toward god and we don't turn toward him then the result of that is eventually the opportunity to turn toward god also becomes less for us it's never completely we are never completely deprived of that but it is it is less So yes if somebody is in a situation where certain certain actions are habitual that indicate that there was certain karma in the past but in the life of every living being every human being especially some time comes when an opportunity for awakening comes and at the time they think oh should i do this should i not do this and that's uh, it might come because of say some encounter with some spiritually minded people it might come because of facing some adversity which jolts their existing world view and that way they start asking raising questions so 
<coughs> last question now there are some questions about astrology which is please refer to the class on 247 when astrology predicts the future it only predicts certain events that may happen in the future it doesn't predict what we will do in the future it so our free will is there the range of our free will might be limited but it is still there are maya and evil related both an influence or temptation to the mind yes maya acts primarily through the mind although not exclusively through the mind uh, so maya can refer to the external tempting objects that we see externally but primarily it refers to the tempting desires that come within us but maya is present not just in the mind maya can be present even in the intelligence krishna says that self destructive desire kama is present in indriyani manobuddhir even in the intelligence so maya refers to the agency that tests our resolve to do the right thing by giving us option alternatives so those alternatives they manifest as external objects they manifest as inner uh, consideration of those objects so the whole agency which tests our resolve to do the right thing that agency is called as maya so thank you very much for your attention and participation if there are any more questions we'll discuss in a future session Hare Krishna